हेलो फ्रेंड्स कैसे हैं आप सब लोग सो लेट अस स्टार्ट द न्यू लेसन व्हिच इज फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर इकोनॉमिक्स प्रीलिम एंड अप टिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ सिलेबस ऑफ प्रीलिम्स एग्जाम एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अगेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन बिकॉज एज यू विल सी द प्रीवियस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन कम फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक विच इज द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स ओके सो वी विल स्टडी दिस इन डीप दिस लेसन नंबर इलेवन इज गोइंग टू बी अ बिट लॉन्ग मे बी अबाउट फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी लेसन्स विल बी देयर इन दिस सो आई विल रिकमेंड यू टू वॉच ऑल ऑफ द वीडियोज ओके डोंट मिस एनी सो लेट अस स्टार्ट financial markets uh, you know before understanding the financial markets let us understand the different markets first okay what are the different markets in an economy okay that is very important and before understanding different markets let us understand what is the meaning of markets okay many of you must already be knowing what are markets okay so uh, in layman terms market is where we go and buy things right you go and buy groceries you go and buy books okay so those are the markets but in terms of economics the subject economics uh, there is a very specific meaning of market okay so we will understand what is market so market is a place where transactions happen okay transactions mean okay so somebody is buying something somebody is selling something okay so th- this is that is known as transaction so there are buyers and there are sellers and the transaction is happening between them so buyer is paying the money seller is giving some commodity or service okay so this is known as transaction so market is a place where transactions happen so it can be offline it can be online also okay it can be offline it can be online so definitely there are sellers in the market as i have already told you there are sellers who supply the commodities or goods or service and there are buyers who demand okay so buyers will demand the commodity in the market sellers will supply the commodities in the market and wherever the total demand in the market is equal to the total supply in the market we achieve the equilibrium okay equilibrium is achieved where demand is equal to supply so this is known as market equilibrium so let us understand uh, by the graphical method this is a very simple graph so this axis is known as the y axis and this axis is known as the x axis the horizontal one on the horizontal axis the x axis we always denote the quantity okay this is this is the q quantity and on the vertical axis y axis we always denote the price p okay now this is the quantity of any goods or any service or anything that we are looking at okay this is a market for one particular good okay and this is the price of that particular good so when we look at them so normally the demand curve is downward sloping this is this is because of the law of demand okay law of demand so for any normal good okay i will explain to you the meaning of normal good for a normal good the demand curve is downward sloping meaning what as your price decreases as the price decreases the quantity demanded increases for example if ice cream is rupees 1000 okay one cup of ice cream is rupees 1000 then say only five people are demanding it or there is a demand for only five cups of ice cream but let's say if the price reduces to 800 then another f- uh, four people can demand so this five people will obviously demand but another four means nine cups will be demanded say for example if the price drops to 500 so another few people will demand so say for example now 15 cups are being demanded then price drops to 100 so now uh, 30 cups are being demanded okay so 30 people are demanding it so this is a normal one this is also intuitively you can feel it that as the price reduces the quantity demanded increases from 5 to 30 so that is why the demand curve normally is downward sloping and similarly the supply curve is normally upward sloping upward sloping meaning as the price increases if the seller is receiving more price he will supply more quantity okay because it will be beneficial for him to supply more to do more labor to mo- to work more hard right so that is why supply curve is upward sloping now wherever these two curves uh, intersect each other so this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve so wherever they intersect this is known as the equilibrium point this point is known as market equilibrium okay इसको हम बोलते हैं मार्केट इक्विलिब्रियम एंड द क्वांटिटी एट दिस इक्विलिब्रियम सो इफ यू लुक एट द एक्स एक्सिस वी विल गेट द इक्विलिब्रियम क्वांटिटी डिनोटेड बाय क्यू ई एंड द प्राइस 
at this point is known as equilibrium price so this will be the price in the market this will be the quantity supplied in the market and this is true for any market okay this is the normal uh, law of demand this is the nor for normal goods for normal goods the demand curve is downward sloping that is as the price increases quantity demanded decreases and supply curve is upward sloping as the price increases quantity demand also increases so this is the normal uh, uh, goods and the goods for which the demand curve is normal are known as normal goods okay this i have already told you and there are other kinds of good uh you know uh, goods for which the demand curve is upward sloping which are not normal are known as giffen goods okay so there are a few goods for you see it may be a little bit counter intuitive shayad aapko thoda samajhne ke liye waqt lagega isko you will take some time to understand that you know there are some goods where the demand curve is also like this upward sloping okay demand curve is also upward sloping meaning what as the price increases the quantity demand also increases now why it happens okay i will explain to you in a very simple terms so say for example first let us look at this if the price decreases the quantity demand will also decrease because see it is upward sloping demand curve so as the price is decreasing the quantity demand is also decreasing so the example of such goods are breads vegetables okay these are inferior goods basically okay inferior goods meaning you know they are attached to some kind of class some kind of uh, you know for example if there is some low quality bread so if the price is too less then people think that it is a bad product or that it doesn't fit into their class so they will not demand it more because they feel that are ye to bahut sasta hai this is very cheap and we will not demand it so if the price further decreases people will further demand it less because they feel that the quality of the product is not good or it is not into their class okay unke standard ka nahi hai ye cheez kharidna okay so these are some of the examples uh, of such kind of giffen goods then there is another example uh, you know which are which are also which follow the same law of upward sloping demand curve but in that case it is reverse so in that case as the price increases the quantity demanded increases okay so such goods are known as weblen goods okay ya yeah, please yaad rakhiye terminology okay what is weblen good weblen goods are the goods which in which if the price of those goods increases the demand quantity demanded also increases now example of this is diamonds okay because it is associated with prestige okay you have some uh, you know value economic value of holding such goods for example you know if the if the diamond of like very super rich people they will feel that jitna uh, mehenga diamond hoga utna zyada acha hoga okay so as the price increases their demand will increase for that particular product so uh, you know diamonds are all, diamonds are uh, weblen goods see bread diamonds these are not strictly they don't fit strictly into this category they may also have a downward sloping demand curve okay but in certain cases in certain circumstances only they act as weblen goods or giffen goods okay or inferior goods so please keep this in mind now inferior goods also strictly this is a different kind of good for in inferior goods in economics are defined as the goods which for, for which the demand decreases as your income increases so here there is a relation between income and demand not the price and demand okay but you just keep in mind that given goods are also a kind of inferior goods only so now we have understood the what is the meaning of market okay what are normal goods what are given goods okay what are inferior goods what are weblen goods we have already studied this so i think it is fairly easy to understand just aap bas itna yaad rakhiye this is the supply curve this is the demand curve this is the normal thing that you have to uh, understand here there is a price here there is a quantity and wherever these two curves intersect this is known as equilibrium point this is equilibrium price and this is equilibrium quantity aapko bas itna yaad rakhna hai okay now different types of markets now let us understand what are the different types of markets so the first type is markets where goods and services are traded okay so there are markets where we go for buying goods and services so such market is known as a real sector market okay this market is known as real sector market wherever there is a, a transaction of goods so goods can be anything it can be agricultural product it can be manufactured product it can be books it can be cars it can be aeroplane it can be anything services it can be anything it can be transportation it can be haircut okay it can be anything any service education health anything so you know whatever we buy which come under the category of goods and services they are known as real sector market so the the 
the demand supply cross will remain the same the normal one demand is downward sloping supply is upward sloping here there is price and here there is quantity okay this you have to keep in mind now there are second types of markets which are known as uh, labor markets okay where the labor is traded okay so again on the x axis there is a quantity of labor okay this is the quantity but this is the number of labor demanded and here there is a price of labor now what is the price of labor basically it is a wages you know what what is the price of per unit labor it is a wages it is a salary that you pay now again the demand for labor is downward sloping okay so jaise jaise mazduri mehangi hote jayegi waise waise jaise jaise uska price increase hota jayega waise waise quantity decrease hote jayegi okay and supply of labor will obviously be upward sloping because as the wages will increase as the wages in the market will increase more and more people would want to work would want to supply their labor and therefore the supply curve for labor is upward sloping and the intersection point is known as labor equilibrium point okay and this is known as the wage level in the market and this is known as the employment level in the market okay this is the employment that total number of labor who are engaged at equilibrium point okay so this is known as labor market then there is a third kind of market which is known as foreign currency market forex market okay where there is a demand and supply for foreign currency for drop for dollar for rupee for euro okay uh, for pound for different kind of or yen for different kind of foreign currency you know there is a demand and supply so such markets are known as forex markets okay now again on x axis there will be quantity now this is the quantity of what this is the quantity of forex demanded okay this is the quantity of forex demanded say for example this is dollar quantity of dollar that is demanded and this is the price of dollar now price of dollar will be what it is the exchange rate what is the meaning of price so for example if dollar 1 dollar is equal to 80 rupees what is this this is the this is the meaning of price that if you want to uh, have 1 dollar you will have to pay 80 rupees so price of 1 dollar is 80 rupees in our local currency and this is known as exchange rate rupees per dollar okay rupees per dollar how many rupees you have to pay for 1 dollar say for example now today 1 dollar is equal to rupees 70 70 rupees tomorrow if 1 dollar becomes 75 rupees so what does that mean now you have to pay more rupees for 1 dollar so our rupee has depreciated and dollar has appreciated this is the simple meaning okay whenever you have to pay more rupees for 1 dollar the it means that the rupee is depreciating right again the same rule will apply here demand curve is downward sloping so demand for dollar is downward sloping because see as the exchange rate will decrease okay so initially say if the exchange rate was 80 now the exchange rate is 75 now it is 70 so more and more people will demand dollars here as the exchange rate will okay decrease you know that you have to pay less and less rupees for each dollar so demand curve is downward sloping again supply curve is upward sloping supply is again you know there are people who have dollars they want to supply it they will supply more if they are getting more rupees per unit dollar okay again the equilibrium point is uh, is obtained where you know this is known as the equilibrium exchange rate equilibrium exchange rate that is existing in the market so this is the rupee per dollar to be paid and here this is the quantity of dollar demanded now you tell me uh, what is the meaning if 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 we move up uh, upward on the y axis what does that mean does it mean that the rupee is appreciating or depreciating okay you comment me in the comment section i have explained to you if we are moving upward on the y axis like like this okay does that mean that the rupee is appreciating or depreciating please tell me in the comment section okay if you tell me i will understand that you have understood what i have explained to you about the forex market now the fourth market and this is what is going to be our topic for this particular lesson is the market where money is traded okay where there is a demand and supply for money we have already studied in the very initial videos that there is a demand for money okay and there is a supply of money okay now demand for money are again of two types there is a transaction motive there is a speculative motive so money is demanded in the market by the people or by the institutions by the businessmen and there is a supply of money also supply of money is done by the central bank that is the rbi or the banking sector okay the banking industry so there is this market is known as money or financial markets wherever there is a demand and supply of money or finances is known as money market or financial market so 
on the x axis what will be there there will be the quantity of money demanded quantity of financing demanded and on the y axis there will be price now what is the price that you have to pay per unit money it is known as interest rates right for example for example if you are demanding say 10000 rupees so you know what is the price of this 10000 rupees so they will say that you have to pay the interest rate on this so say if it interest rate is 10% so maybe you will demand 10,000 rupees. Now say if the interest rate increases to 15%, maybe you will you will demand less money now because see the interest rates has risen. The businessman will want to uh, invest less. They want to take less of loans. Okay. So this is again very intuitive. So the price that you have to pay for the money in the money market is known as interest rates. Interest rates is the price that you pay per unit of money that you demand. Okay. Now wherever this... Uh, this supply curve is known as the money supply ms and the demand curve is known as money demand which is md okay so wherever these two curves will cross they are known as the equilibrium point in the money market this is the equilibrium interest rates in the market and this is the money supplied or money demanded in the market total money in the market so this is a very important topic and we will study this only in very detail about the financial markets i hope you have understood this okay and in this particular lesson we will study the financial markets where money or finance is traded so we will begin from the next video uh, okay of this particular lesson lesson number 11 what are the financial markets what are the different institutions okay what are the different institutions what are the different regulators okay what are the different types what are the different instruments okay used in financial or money markets so this we will study from the following videos okay so uh, keep it up and uh, we'll come up with the next lesson very soon thank you